expected to be back here. Uh, expect to be in the church on Tuesday. So, in the meantime, uh, this lady called Mrs. Patricia Moore has been playing for us. Uh, playing for us Thursday. Playing for us again this morning. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Good to see you. Thanks for doing that. And we're very grateful. Uh, Ashlyn Marie.
planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. what I have here. Can you see inside there? What does that look like? Some dirt? Yeah. It's not from Grandpa's farm. It is some dirt. There's some dirt in there. You smell it. smells here like dirt. And there's a seed planted in there. Can you see it? Can't see it, can you? It's down deep inside there. But there's a seed planted in there. And now look at this thing. This thing is already bloomed. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that a pretty flower? Yes. This flower, though, is so cool. You know what this flower can do? It can dance. You want to see it dance? You know how to do it? You press the button. You want to press the button? 
Yeah, that's what I have to do. This one, I'm afraid, you can't just press a button and make it grow. But Jesus said if we keep on showing his love everywhere, lots of things are going to grow. And this thing is fun, but that's all it does. But it is fun. Yeah, I know. Yeah, lots of stuff in this world is fun. But we need to remember the good stuff and really show the love of God all around us. Okay? Carl prepares a couple bulletins for these guys. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Some people hear what Jesus is saying, but they don't understand it. It's like trying to tell a joke to someone that they just can't get. Some people hear it, and it sounds good, but it's just added to what we already know. And they don't really understand the true value of it, because it's just added on to everything else they have in this life. It gets lost in the shuffle. Some people hear the word, it's calling out louder and louder and louder to them, but yet the things of the world call out louder and louder and louder. And some people hear it, and they live it. 
I expect more from Jesus' people, and I don't know if this is right or not, but I do. With all due respect, I expect more from Jesus' people than I do people who claim they do not follow Christ. Because Jesus' people say, I know better. Jesus' people say, I know what I should do. Jesus' people say, I believe in Christ and what he says. So Jesus' people, I think, have a different kind of responsibility than other people have. We are supposed to lead the way. We are supposed to have the greatest understanding, the most amount of compassion, the most amount of love. There's a woman in my former parish, uh, one of my former parishes, who suffered from depression. And <coughs> For her, for her, a good day was being able to get up and get dressed. That was a good day. When she could open up her curtains and actually sit in her chair and turn on the TV, otherwise she'd just lay in bed and sleep. Or lay on the couch and sleep. <coughs> and that seems like such a little trivial thing for us. But for some people, they have to really struggle in this life just to make it from here to there. I've been uh, used to lift weights all the time. I did before I moved here, and I had these weights that I had a thousand, a lot of reasons, uh, for a lot of, I really do wish I would have kept them. And I didn't, I wound up giving them away to this uh, one kid in my congregation who was uh, lifting weights all the time. He didn't have any, and I thought, well, you know, I'll probably lift them less and less as the years go on, and I gave them to them. But I should have uh, kept them, probably. But I've been getting into weightlifting again. Um, I stand up. <laughs> stand up. <laughs> running again. Almost the same thing, like running around the block. Runs. Though seeing, sometimes they do not see. Though hearing, sometimes they do not hear, Jesus says. They have a test for colorblindness. Anyone ever take a test for colorblindness? It's pretty cool. They have these little dots, some different kind of colored dots. What they have is they have letters or numbers that are inside this thing that people who are colorblind cannot see. It's only the people who aren't colorblind can see what is actually in that picture. Look out on the web sometimes. It's pretty fascinating. Find out if you are colorblind. We can stare and stare and stare at things sometimes. We just don't see them for what they really are. And we're always turning our back on something. We're always walking away from something. We're always looking in a different direction from one thing or another. My uh, oldest daughter's uh, sons were in a a ball team, a t-ball, is that what they call it, something like that, you know, little teeny guys, and she uh, said one of the most hilarious things she ever saw in her life, here are these little boys, there are all these little boys kind of running around in the field, and acting like little puppies, I mean, they kind of remind me when they're out there like that, and all of a sudden the ice cream truck went by, <laughs> she said, every little kid's head turned, followed the ice cream truck. Not the adults, every little kid said. We look towards one thing, we look away from something else. That's the way life works. And sometimes we look away from Christ in order to look at something else. My youngest daughter told her kid, uh, she's my youngest daughter lives in Virginia, and uh, it was always sad whenever they leave, you know, but they sometimes come up to see us with their, their father, um, the kids do. My daughter without her husband, and my then they're sad to leave their daddy. My daughter, my daughter turned to her uh, her daughter, and one time and said, to her, "You know, you're always saying goodbye to someone. You do, don't we? Always saying goodbye to someone, saying hi to someone else. It's the way life works." I told my optometrist uh, a little while back that he should get a new eye chart. The one he has is looking so funny. You know what I mean? So, 
Didn't used to be that fuzzy. I think it's about time for a new one. What do you think? We're always focusing on one thing and not focusing on something else. My mother-in-law, uh, God rest her soul, went to school and did not have glasses. She did not know her eyes were so bad. And I think it was at her first year in school, or third, my wife was, in third grade. So here she went clear up to third grade without knowing how bad her eyes were. And all of a sudden her teacher noticed, sent her to an optometrist, and sure enough, she couldn't see. She thought everyone saw it that way. It's just how people look at the world. It's not, we have different ways of seeing different ways of understanding. An infant has more bone than what an adult has. Does everybody know that? An infant has around 300 bones. You know how many adults have? Around 200. About 206 is the average. It's not as if some of the bones disappear. You know what happens? They fuse together. So a couple bones become one bone. We hear the word of God and it fuses together with worldly stuff. So we still kind of keep it in mind, but it's fused together with everything else in the world. And that's why we really don't hear it and we don't see it so very much. There's a great movie called The Fly. The original was uh, back in the 1950s. That was a great film. But they did a couple remakes of it since then. My favorite is with uh, Jeff Goldblum in the 1980s. And anyone see that? And one of the cool things they do is that he transports himself from one pod to another pod. And so he gets inside this pod for the transportation. And what he doesn't realize is that a fly gets in there with him. So when he's transported from this pod into the other pod, he, the fly and, and, and this guy merge together. Their DNA does. And they become one. And I think that kind of stuff happens to us so much in life. Merging together with different things and some things we never meant to have that happen. Did you read this article about Hesse Levinson's cap? Did anybody read this about Hesse? I think this is a way, way cool story. Um, Hesse Levinson's cap was a, a perfect, was a baby in, back in 1934. She was a Nazi propaganda tool. What they did was that the, there was a Nazi magazines, and they wanted to have a picture of the perfect Aryan baby. And that turned out to be Hesse Levinson's cat. All these different photographers sent in photographs to this magazine to find out who was the perfect looking Aryan baby. You know what's so cool about this story? She's Jewish. She's Jewish. Editors of the magazine didn't know that. They just chose the photograph. The photographer who took the picture didn't know that. He just threw in a bunch of, submitted a bunch of photographs. So it's this Jewish kid that won. I think that is so cool. It's funny when you think you see something, you really don't see it. There's a guy at a busy restaurant, he couldn't find some money uh, that fell from his wallet. When he went to pay the bill, he just realized it. And it was a busy restaurant, rather big restaurant. Retraced his steps and couldn't find it, couldn't find it, looking all over the place. And finally, he uh, went about in the middle of the restaurant and he shouted out, excuse me, sorry to interrupt your meal, uh, but I lost a $100 bill. And if anyone would return that to me, uh, I'll give them uh, $10. And people kind of mumbled a little bit there was a voice from the back of the restaurant, and the voice said, I'll give 20. <laughs> <laughs> Up to the highest bidder in this life. I'll give you my life on the cross, Jesus says. Kind of mumble a little bit, look around. Then we hear the world say, I'll give you riches and power. My parents uh, used to do a really cool thing when we were kids. They did lots of cool things. But they, one of the things he did for us, uh, my dad did at the beginning of summer, was that he got a big
big pile of sand put into uh, the lot that was next to ours. And uh, we used to play around in all the time. This big pile of sand, I mean, I, don't know, I remember it being huge, huge. I don't know how big it was, but you know, for a kid it was big. Every summer you would do that. Uh, we, we lived in Sandusky near Lake Erie. You get the sand pretty easily. So he did that to kind of keep us around the house so we wouldn't go roaming around too much in the neighborhood, you know. We'd play on that sand all summer long. All sorts of different games you'd play on the sand, the big pile. But finally, by the end of summer, you know what happened to that pile? It's all spread out. No pile at all. The next summer, we do the same thing. Piled up all over. So many things slip away this life. And we have good intentions. We mean well. And life whittles us down and life itself becomes whittled down. I believe that faith is a tune that we cannot get out of our head. Do you ever have a tune that gets stuck in your head? My wife and I do this all the time. And, you know, I, I will sing songs around the house. I got that from my mom. She would always sing to us sometimes rather annoyingly. But every once in a while, I'll just kind of break out in some goofy song. We just did this last night. Uh, there was a song, uh, and I started singing it. And she started singing it then. And then and later on, she kept on singing it. Why'd you start singing it? You just can't get rid of it. A tune. That's what faith is, I think. It's a tune you just can't get out of your head. Small doubts take root in us, they grow. Faith takes root in us, it can grow too. And we ourselves are fertile ground for all sorts of mischief and all sorts of terrible things and all sorts of good things. The truth of the matter is, is without your love I cannot survive. That's the truth. Without your kindnesses, without your forgiveness, Without your grace, I cannot survive. You are able to share those things because they were given to you through Jesus. That's the way this world is supposed to work. Continually share. One of my favorite lines is, uh, it goes, anyone can count how many seeds are in an apple. Only God can count how many apples are in a seed. I'd like you to take a bow with me this morning. If you would please just raise your right hand. And, well, you don't have to actually raise it. You can pretend to raise it, okay, if you want to. Here it goes. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. What I ought to do, by the grace of God, help me to do it. If it makes you feel any better, gripe about it. You know, God's used to gripes. Gripe about having to do it. I do it all the time, griping about things. So and so doesn't have to do it, you know. Ever say that to your parents or have your kids say it to you, those of you who have children? You might give the same line that my wife would always give our kids. She would always say, well, I'm not so-and-so's parent. I'm yours. And who is our 
follow? I ask. Is he God? Is Jesus our Lord? And he calls us to do it. Wherever God is in this holy ground, wherever he is, and he's all over this earth, he's in each and every one that's out there walking around this place. I don't know why some things work and other things don't when you try to share the love of Jesus. All I know is that he has given us Jesus and his love that can be shared. The love of Christ is this tomb that I cannot get out of my head. Can you hear it?
strengthened by the Spirit who gives us words to speak and hearts that care. Let us bring our hopes and needs to God who listens. Merciful God, you give your word to guide, correct, teach, and inspire. Draw us into your story and give us wisdom, understanding, and obedient hearts as we follow your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. The amazing cycle of birth, growth, and death sustains your creation. Bring forth an abundant harvest, keep farmers safe, and teach us to cherish life in all its forms and stages. Lord, in your mercy. In places of war, bring peace, and in places of hatred, sow love. Help world leaders set aside their prejudices, put down their weapons, and work together for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy. We live in a land of plenty, and still there are those without enough to eat. Give us generous hearts to those who are hungry. Bless the hands of those who work so that others might eat. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Raise up leaders for your church who will tend to your harvest. We lift up seminaries and church colleges, bishops, and synod staff, Lutheran World Relief, and the Lutheran World Federation, as they live out their callings to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Bless the many of those who now worship at your eternal throne, and bless those who worship in hopeful expectation your eternal kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O oh God, we pray that your healing power be with all who are homebound, hospitalized, or sick, or who in any way need a special measure of it, including Bonnie, Palomara, Linda, Kim Quarter, Jackie, Bob, and Esther, Denny, and Marjorie Downs, Alfred and Rita Priggy, Terry Noda, and Josh Baitnoff, for Rudy and Ann Ramey, Kelly Garst, Don and Susan Davis, Susan Allen, Pat Bainhoff, Beth Jenny, Arlita Panning, Josh Bevel, and Louisa Bevel. For Sandy Morrison, Russ Band Leaders, Sandy Bosselman and Katie Michaelis. For Laura Bosselman, Cass Bolton, Nor Brandt, Roma Brown, Valerie, Jane Young, and Jeff Brown. For Anna Long, Colleen Cable, Juanita Clausen, Lucy Zwiebel. Irene Cordes, Cole Spangler, Stephen. Paul Cousineau, Jeannie Curtis, Ron Dockenhaus, David Betty Meyer, Ruby Eichhoff, Eleanor Engler, and Crystal Garcia. For Allie Grace Small, Linda Hill, Richard Hoover, Jordan James, Alexa Jennings, and Mary Brown. We pray for Joshua Jenny, for Dustin Brown, Audrey Schrager, Bruce King, Fred Close, and Glenn Colby. For Marlene Kreider, Alice Langhoff, Brent Leiter, and Sarah, Sarah Lenhart. Tammy Porter, Paul Long, Mary Louise Weevil, Ken Ludeman, and Linda Loss. For Ben Michaelis, Jamie Bosselman, Billy Miller, and Emma Myers. Brent Thompson, Arlene Miller, Shirley Myers Bages, Betsy Mix, and Donna Norton. For Alice Overhouse, Paul Panning, Carol Berlin, Leona Pedraza, Robert Klassman, Lois Plotz, Naomi Rhodes, and Lucas Roseville. For Brendan, Deb Shane, Chris Schmidmeyer, Amos Shulman, Melanie Simpson, Dick Brown, Miranda Shane, Michael Sprayer, and Georgia City Gold. For Roman Strom, KT, Deb Tiffany, Ted Pitkemeyer, Kelly Troyer, Charlotte Longring, Jeff Warner, Rose Speakers, Andrew Williams, Bill Winsby, Bethany Wolf, Landon Zunk, and Stan and Eileen May, and all those who are now in our hearts. they may know of your vigilant presence in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays this coming week. Those people include Mary Weshi, Jeff Hayes, Kyle Zachrich, Kathy Bosselman, Terry Sedan, Shirley Walker, Kelly Burkhart, Nancy Schink, Ida Seaton, Zachary Sweet, and on their anniversaries for Steve and Julie Bush, Todd and Krista Amstutz, Rupert and Rita Schweinhagen, and Ke Kevin and Kathy Sonnenberg. We also pray for those serving in the military in this our congregation and this our country, including Mike Dimache, Elizabeth Yoder, Tyler Hayes, Austin Oldberg, Zach Bonner, and Jessica Reed. Be with them all and bless them and keep them in your heavenly grace. We lift our prayers to you, God of mercy, confident that all things are in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the 
Lord be with you all. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
bless you and keep you in the faith. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.